I'm gonna say this fast, so pay attention. Sander might be right behind me because I just told him a brutally obvious lie about why I couldn't be with him to make him believe I was coming here to meet you. I know he followed me from home. I'm not sure if he came all the way to this island, but there's a pretty good chance he did, so could I please just hang out with you until okay. he shows up and, and hopefully finds us doing something romantic? Is this what you really want? I've already explained this. I have two choices. I can either drag Sander through the hell of cancer and watch his spirit die piece by piece along with my body, or I can push him away and make him so mad that he finally gives up. I've already made my decision. It is not up for debate. And if Xander walks in here, I really don't want him to see me cry. Please. Okay. Nicholas, you said you would help me. I will, I will, I will. I okay, will. well then think of something romantic fast. Oh, what are you... Okay, 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 okay. Well, I, I don't know. I suppose we could, we could, we could dance. Or, yes, yes, yes. Okay, a waltz, like like uh, the night of the bacchanalia. All right, uh, music or no? Uh, no, no, it would hurt more. Okay, okay. All right, we're on. Okay. The dance is over. Do I search this moldy pile of rocks, or do you tell me which rafter Stefan is hanging from? What makes you think Stefan is here? I haven't heard from him in months. Cut the crap. You know he's been at the sanitarium, sniffing around after my wife. Why would I expect you to listen to reason, or even recognize the truth when you hear it? What else did he order? Was he in on the hospital switch, the drug therapy? Has he ordered a lobotomy? You're right, Luke. You're right. My uncle's the big villain here, the source of all my mother's problems. It was Stefan who dragged Laura into hiding and ran her ragged. It was Stefan, evil Stefan, who, when Laura broke from reality, refused to get her psychiatric help. It was he... No, wait. That was you. Well, see, now that doesn't fit. Well, Stefan must have been pulling your string. You tell Stefan the game is on. He didn't have to come with me. I had business in town anyway. How you feeling? So far, so good. But I know from experience that the chemo gets worse as you go along. You'll make it. You sound so sure. I am. You're one of the strongest people I know, Em. And I want you to know that you're not alone, okay? <laughs> the teen and earlier. Nicholas joining your little group, too. Sorry to interrupt. Hey. Hey. What's going on? I, uh, I was out walking, and I, I, I ran into Nicholas. So. How was the tea with your grandmother? It was good. It was, it was great. <laughs> It was a little boring, actually. Em Emily, stop. We have to tell him the truth. I asked Emily to meet me. Uh, she made up the story about having tea with her grandmother because I wanted to talk to her about you. About the fact that I'm concerned that you're a flight risk. Now, I have no problem putting up your bail money as long as you stay in town and, and show up every time you're supposed to. Well, I'm not going anywhere. Good. Sorry about the deceit. It's not what I've done. It's what Laura did. She fell in love with me. No. You manipulated her. She never loved you. Oh, no. She loved me. And I made her happy in a way you never could. And you can't face that. The same way you can't face that you're poison to Laura. She is an empty shell. Locked away in an institution, and you're responsible. You continue to keep me from my wife, and I promise you I will kill you. Leave him alone, Luke. I'm the one you want. You're a puppet. You got no mind of your own. You just follow orders. Think whatever you like. It's still my name on all the legal documents. You agreed to turn her over to me. If I thought you had even one rational bone in your entire body, I would have. So you lied. <laughs> well, why am I not surprised you all lie? Must be on the family crest. House of Cassidyne, lie, deceit, deceive. All your chest pounding is pointless, Luke. You're pointless. Irrelevant, in fact. Your own wife has even passed you by. Look 
looking for blame. Look in the mirror. You talk a good game with Uncle Vlad lurking nearby, but he won't always have his bat wing around you. Consider this the beginning of your end. Don't mistake me for an ally. This war will not continue. Is on the brink of a full-scale financial collapse. That's why I'm here. The last thing we need right now is the kind of trouble Luke Spencer can make for us. He has no resources. <laughs> when Luke is, is driven, relentless, and, and it's personal, he doesn't need resources. Your mother is in an institution right now because you, of him. You know you, that. You can't restart this vendetta against them. It's not worth it. Listen, I will decide what is worth what around here. If I want to destroy Luke Spencer for no other reason than spite, I will. Just don't let it touch the people I care about, or you'll be the one destroyed. Stefan! I didn't realize you were back. Maybe you don't remember me? Hello, Emily. I presume there's a reason for this visit. Yes, I was told Nicholas would be here. Ah, well, he stepped out. And uh, I apologize if this seems rude, but he and I have a full evening of business to attend to. Though I will tell him you stopped by. Do you need Mrs. Lansbury to show you out? No. I'm gonna wait here for Nicholas. Well, apparently I wasn't clear. You see, Nicholas and I are very busy this evening. Mm -hmm. And the last thing he needs is a schoolgirl panting after him. But I'm not so panting please, after anyone. So just, mind. no, leave me. What? I... What are you doing? Hey, Zen. Hey, I got your message. Still looking for a way out to Spoon Island? No, I didn't need it. Brother and Emily showed up here at Kelly's. Okay, so what was so important about seeing Nicholas? bailed me out which doesn't make any sense because he doesn't like me he hates me and i want to know if you knew why what well, doesn't matter yeah it does when it has to do with emily what emily asked him for a favor yeah, and he did it without question because he wants to show what a great guy he is nicholas wants emily emily's always welcome in my home Nicholas, you and I have business to discuss. I was only escorting her to the front hall. I think your exact words were, Nicholas doesn't need me panting after him like some desperate, pathetic fool. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm just a little lightheaded. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. All right, I'll take you home. Oh, Nicholas, please, let one of the servants take her. Our business can't wait. Emily's a higher priority than business, Uncle. Or you. said anything about Emily since she got back. No, but it's it's not surprising they're spending so much time together. They've always been really close. How close? Has Emily ever told you about the Four Musketeers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and Elizabeth and Emily and Nicholas. Yeah, right. it was a long time ago. Things have changed. I always had the feeling when Emily grew up, you know, Nicholas would always look at her differently and do something about it. Maybe. Maybe Nicholas is falling in love. But Emily can't be. Are you sure about that? Uh, it, was a, it was a dizzy spell from the chemo. Yeah. The doctor says I'll probably have more. What can I do to help? You are already helping me by pretending that you're falling in love with me, so Xander will move on. Yeah, well... I'll tell you, people don't always do what you want them to, you know, and they almost always resent having people play God with their lives, no matter how good your intentions are. I'm not playing God. I'm setting Xander free. Have I ever told you how incredibly stubborn you are? <laughs> <laughs> Two or three times a month for as long as I've known you. Besides, 
Stubbornness isn't always a bad thing. You know, it can be really useful when you know something is right and you have to pressure a really good friend into helping you do uh, it. I don't feel pressured. I'm glad you asked for my help. Doing this for you is about the only positive thing I have going on in my life these days. <laughs> He's working with you. Well, you can't honestly have expected Nicholas to tell you about it. His first loyalty is always to the Cassidines. Mrs. Lansbury told me you were here. So your uncle's back. Yes, I'm sorry. Didn't get a chance to tell you. Oh, it doesn't matter. I know what's going on. Stefan's playing his favorite little game. Baiting my father. Trying to get you and I at each other's throats, but he also claimed that you've been working with him. Like a good little Cassidine. Tell him, Nicholas. Let him know where your loyalties lie. My uncle's lying. I haven't been working with him. I had no idea he was even coming back from Europe. I didn't think so. Luke is dangerously off balance. You may need my protection. And any bond you have with your brother is on his father's orders. You should consider the possibility that he's deceiving you. His only true loyalty is to Luke. Don't you forget who you are. You're a Cassidine, and your loyalty remains with this family. My family includes my brother. I won't fight Lucky. And I won't fight Nicholas. Your war stops here. We want no part of it. Alone. What do you mean, let? You know that she's terrified of chemo. She needs us. Come on, if we go now, we can get there Alan, before she's finished. Alan, Alan, we can't force Emily to lean on us. She's a grown woman. Not to me. Look. She knows what she's dealing with. We have to let her do it in her own way. But she's cutting herself off from the people who love her the most. So did I, first. Then you know how much she needs us. Or is it that we need her to need us? Hmm? I just can't bear the idea of her going into that chemo room Ellen, alone. we've got to trust her. She's going to find the support she needs at her own pace, in her own way, okay? So late. Yeah, I was just about to call the house. No, I wasn't gonna skip out, don't worry. Are you alright? Yeah, you yeah, fine. All right, so am I, except for the breast cancer. <laughs> what happened? No, it's family stuff. You know, one of my favorite things about you is that you actually come from a family that is more dysfunctional <laughs> and weirder than mine. Well, it's Nice to know the Cassidines are good for something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be laughing about that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'm glad someone can laugh at my family. <laughs> Uncle's only been back a few days and I already feel like punching a wall. Oh, you poor baby. Isn't it fortunate that I can just walk away from him and come see you? How do you always know the exact right <laughs> thing to say? Well, that was very well brought up. That must be it. Yeah. Do you uh, want me to sit with you through the chemo? I brought some books. You aren't going to read to me in Latin, are you? <laughs> would you prefer Greek? <laughs> no, I would prefer to be someplace else. <sighs> yeah, where would you go, Emily? I don't know. The desert, probably. I used to take these long walks there with my biological mom. Or maybe I'll imagine I am in Canada, in the dead of winter. <laughs> In a log cabin with you-know-who. Kind of a runaway and get back to the land sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, plenty of wood and mm. food, wine. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. And lots of chocolate, too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. mostly Xander. You better get going before that nurse comes looking for you. She's kind of perky, isn't she? Yeah. A bit unsettling. <laughs> I might have to smack her. <laughs> do you uh, do you want me to wait and take you home? Yeah, thanks. That would be really nice of you. Okay, go on, get out of here. Okay. okay, thanks again. Yeah. One question. Are you in love with Emily? Try not to have personal discussions. And you too good for that? Or with people I barely know. It's a simple question. 
Are you in love with Emily? <laughs> you're, you're not listening, Xander. Then what's the problem? Huh? Is Xander not good enough for you? Is that it? You're getting this all wrong. No, okay. it's a simple question. Answer the question. It's Do you love her? It's irrelevant. No, but does that mean she doesn't mean anything to you? Do you realize that Emily's going through hell right down that hall? Oh yeah, what hell would that be? <laughs> Drug counseling is, is difficult for everyone. Well, what do you yeah. know about drug counseling? Nothing, but I know Emily needs me, right? Oh, you, but not me. Is that it? That's the way she wants it. No, that's the way want you want it, Nicholas, and I still don't get why. Emily. Emily. How did you find me? You're back early. What's, what's <laughs> Emily, whoa, 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 okay. you look like you're about to faint. No, I'm not, I'm not. It's okay. You want me to go down that hall and find out what's really going on? No. <laughs> look, why can't you just accept that Emily and I are in love? There it is. I love Emily. I suppose I always have. At first as a surrogate little sister kind of thing, but now it's much more. There you go. Yeah, I'm not buying this. Well, that's not... Nicholas, uh, if you'll excuse us, Nicholas, you and I have some important family business to discuss. No, this, this can't wait. You need to stop hounding Emily and interrogate Okay, maybe your uncle takes you your orders, me. but I sure as hell don't. If you've been in love with Emily for so long, then what was the deal with Gia? Gia broke off our engagement, now I see that was for the best. I didn't really realize it, but I've just been waiting for Emily to grow up, and now she has. Yeah, I'm not buying this. Are you buying any of this? Okay, look, I am not going to discuss my personal problems in front of Stefan and everyone else in this hospital. And if you really cared about me, then you, you would stop oh, pushing oh, me. Come on, come on. Okay. Okay. okay, Emily, what happened? I, you fell down like you were going to faint over there. Are you, are you on something? Oh, my God. Will you stop badgering her? She just said she doesn't want to debate her personal okay, would life. would you just back off? Emily, what's going on? What's wrong? I want to go home, and Nicholas is going to take me. Can you just please let him do that without turning this into a fight? the top down has made me feel a million times better. Uh, good. I think I could actually eat something right now. Yeah. yeah. Stop then! Wow. wow. <laughs> when Cassidines want their servants, we either ring them with a handbell or call them on the phone, but we never bellow like that. <laughs> well, bellowing is the only way we quartermains ever do anything around here. Dobson! Dobson! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the bellow method is working at the moment. Yeah. So listen, it's not going to be easy for you to hide the effects of chemo with a house full of servants and, and family, so why don't you come stay at Windermere for a couple of days? You know, you can have quiet and, and privacy and servants who actually come when you call them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, most importantly, you, you, won't, you won't have to hide that you're sick, Em. Not only are you the most polite human who has ever lived, you're probably the most thoughtful. <laughs> um, I'm going to be all right here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll be by tomorrow. If, uh, if you need anything in the meantime, just, just call me. Okay, now, you have gone way above and beyond the call of friendship, especially covering for me with Xander today. That was, that was really great of you. Well, you're pretty great yourself. <laughs> <laughs>
Nicholas is not at home. Oh, I know, but he uh, invited me to stay, so I'm taking him up on it. Uh, I've already asked the housekeeper to make up a room for me. Hmm. Well, your timing is inconvenient. Nicholas has other concerns at the moment. Look, Spencer has lost whatever's left of his mind. He's making violent threats. Okay, well, then it's a good thing I'm here. Uh, last time Luke threatened Nicholas, I stood up for him. Did you? Yeah. Are you giving yourself too much credit? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Nicholas loves you. I understand how that works. I, I love my family even when they are uh, rude, hostile, or just plain wrong. But the first thing I do when I meet someone I like is tell them to ignore my family because they don't speak for me and they don't get to decide my life. Just like you don't get to decide Nicholas's. I have no objection to a friendship between you and Nicholas. But a romance is unacceptable. <laughs> Were you listening? You don't get a vote. You know, I resigned myself to Nicholas's engagement with Gia. I knew there would never be a marriage. I knew okay. Nicholas what would eventually Nicholas come to his senses. getting sense married have to do with me spending the night? Nothing. That's exactly my point. There's no place for you in Nicholas's life. And if you continue to push your way in, I'll have no choice but to push you out. Hey, I got the message. What's the emergency? Listen, are you positive? There's no paper trail, but we have my man. Absolutely. It's all in the computer at the attorney's office. Why? What's the problem? Well, my dad's really lost at this time. He's on a one-man rescue mission, and he's not taking anyone prisoner. We can't let Luke near our mom, Lucky. Well, I agree, but he's coming after you, so you better keep your bodyguards close. He's so out of control, I don't know what he'll do next. Nicholas is not at home. Oh, I know, but he uh, invited me to stay, so I'm taking him up on it. Uh, I've already asked the housekeeper to make up a room for me. Hmm. Well, your timing is inconvenient. Nicholas has other concerns at the moment. Luke Spencer has lost whatever's left of his mind. He's making violent threats. Okay, well, then it's a good thing I'm here. Uh, last time Luke threatened Nicholas, I stood up for him. Did you? Are you giving yourself too much credit? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Nicholas loves you. I understand how that works. I, I love my family even when they are uh, rude, hostile, or just plain wrong. But the first thing I do when I meet someone I like is tell them to ignore my family because they don't speak for me and they don't get to decide my life. Just like you don't get to decide Nicholas's. I have no objection to a friendship between you and Nicholas, but a romance is unacceptable. <laughs> Were you listening? You don't get a vote. You know, I resigned myself to Nicholas's engagement with Gia. I knew there would never be a marriage. I knew okay. that Nicholas what would eventually Nicholas come to his senses. What does getting married have to do with me spending the night? Nothing. That's exactly my point. There's no place for you in Nicholas's life. And if you continue to push your way in, I'll have no choice but to push you out. Nicholas. Hey, I got the message. What's the emergency? Listen, are you positive? There's no paper trail, but we have my man. Absolutely. It's all in the computer at the attorney's office. Why? What's the problem? Well, my dad's really lost at this time. He's on a one-man rescue mission, and he's not taking anyone prisoner. Hey. We can't let Luke near our mom, Lucky. Well, I agree, but he's coming after you, so you better keep your bodyguards close. He's so out of control, I don't know what he'll do next. I'm just telling you, watch your back, because, I mean, he is on a rampage. I already had a run-in with Luke earlier today. Oh, great. Yeah, it's worse. Well, he came by my room earlier, and, you know, started yelling, and went and started a fight. Well, he hit his head, and... Summer and I, we took him to the hospital. He had a concussion, and... The doctor told me he had to stay overnight, but he took off. Well, if Luke's looking for a fight, you know he'll go right to my uncle. He thinks we're all conspiring against him. You, me, Stefan. Step. My uncle has no idea where we sent Laura. Well, you try telling my dad that. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go try and find him, see if I can calm him down. All right, well, if he stops by Windermere, I'll let you know. Well, if he does, just take it easy, okay? Regardless of how much yelling and threatening he does. 
I'll try, Lucky, but if he gets violent, I'm telling you. Well, with the drugs he's on and the alcohol he's probably had, there's, there's no telling what he could do next, so be careful. Uh, you're not pushing me anywhere, Mr. Cassidyne. What I have with Nicholas is none of your business. Nicholas has always been my main concern. That will never change. <laughs> well, what if Nicholas doesn't appreciate your input? Are you going to try to intimidate me because you can't control him? Don't be absurd. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what this is about, isn't it? Nicholas won't listen to you, so you're trying to, to bully me into going away. <laughs> hmm. Is there something else on your mind besides a romance with Nicholas? No, nothing. I just, I want you, I want you to leave us alone. What's wrong with you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm just, uh, I'm j just, just a little light, lightheaded. You had a dizzy spell at the hospital earlier. It was quite effective with Nicholas. He came rushing to your side, full of concern. Yes, Nicholas is a very thoughtful person. And you use that to your advantage. <laughs> what does that mean? If you care about Nicholas, you'll stop manipulating him. You know, for someone who claims to love Nicholas, you sure don't respect him very much. He would know if I was playing him, not that I ever would. What do you want from him? It can't be money. The Quartermain's dote on you. You, you must have a comfortable trust fund at your disposal. <laughs> has, it, has it ever even occurred to you that we might actually care about each other? Well, there must be a reason for this relationship suddenly blossoming into a romance. It's not sudden. We've been friends for years. Yes, friends. Nothing more. And now, out of the blue, you claim to be in love. And what do you have with Nicholas that has caused this abrupt shift? It's called trust and mutual respect, qualities you obviously know nothing about. Well, trust and mutual respect, notwithstanding. You are an unwanted distraction, and I will not allow Nicholas to waste any more time with you. You won't allow? <laughs> I have to protect this family's future. Okay, well, I guess everybody needs a hobby. But there is no way that you're telling me or Nicholas who to be with. I raised Nicholas as a son. He will disagree with me at first, but eventually he will abide by my wishes. You are not Nicholas's guardian anymore. You don't control him. Nicholas loves you, but that does not mean that he has any illusions about you. You are obsessed with power and tradition, and Nicholas isn't. You underestimate Nicholas's loyalty to family. Nicholas is so much more than the Cassidyne heir. And if you don't start appreciating him for who he is, you're going to lose him for good. Don't threaten me. If anyone is going to lose Nicholas, it's you. Get away from her. Apologize to Emily now. <laughs> Nicholas, for God's sake, what sort of hold does this girl have over you? Why are you talking about her as if she's not in the room? Apologize or pack your bags and go back to Greece. I apologize, Miss Quartermain, if there was any misunderstanding. But I will not apologize to you for looking out for your best interests. How's being rude to my girlfriend in my best interest? Girlfriend? Yeah, you know I'm in love with Emily. You heard me tell Xander at the hospital. Oh, Nicholas, open your eyes. Emily is using you to make that other boy jealous. She times her dizzy spell perfectly to have both of you rush to her side. <sighs> Congratulations, uncle. You've just gone from gratuitously rude to outright insulting. You want to go further? Because I have no problem with sending you back where you came from and making sure you stay there. Well, you need my help. And if the only way to ensure that is to abide by your wishes, then so be it. Thank you. And you will never insult Emily again, is that clear? Perfectly. know if I've ever told you this before, but when you decide to be, you are one scary, <laughs> kick-ass prince. Come here. 
Mm. <laughs> How you feeling? Guilty. It mm. was totally unfair of me to make you pretend that you're falling in love with me. Oh, you didn't make me do anything. I agreed because I want to help you any way you need. Which proves that you're a wonderful friend and I'm not. Since when? You love your uncle and he loves you. He was, he was the only father you knew growing up and now he's back and the two of you should be enjoying your time together and not, not fighting over me. In all the time that you've known me, when have I not been fighting with my uncle? <laughs> yes, yes, he loves me, but he uses it as an excuse to do things I hate treat people badly and basically try to run my life. He'll never stop. I'll never give in, you know. He and I will just, just continue to clash with each other. I'm just... I'm sorry that he's decided the latest battle has to be over you. What if you gave in? <laughs> Is this your way of saying that you want out of our fake romance? Because you know it's always been your choice. You want to... Tell Xander the truth, I'm all for it, but if you want to keep going the way we are, I'll do that too. But the one thing I don't want you to do is give up your plan for my uncle's sake. Look, it costs you to fight with Stefan. I mean, you know, you're, you're good at it. You've got the whole, <laughs> I'm the Cassidine prince, obey me or face everlasting exile thing, you know, <laughs> down cold. <laughs> and I don't know, I mean, maybe threats are the only language Stefan understands. But I know you hate doing this, and I can't stand being the reason. You're not, Emily. I am. I grew up. My uncle doesn't like it. He spent his whole life planning for the day I'd inherit, and now that I have, he wishes I was a little boy again. You see, he wants the power for himself, but I refuse to give it to him. That's, it's that simple. So please, please don't take my family insanity out on yourself. <laughs> All right, okay. No problem. I've got enough family insanity of my own. <laughs> but listen, will you promise me one thing? Of course. If this pretending to fall in love with me thing ever, ever becomes a problem for you, you will tell me you want out. All right. But it won't happen. You're even more stubborn than I am. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. So, uh, I see you decided to take me up on my offer to stay here. Yeah, if it's still okay. Of course. What, uh, what changed your mind? Oh, <laughs> the, the downside to riding in a convertible with a top down is that your hair gets all tangled, and um, I was combing mine out, and I don't know if I'm being paranoid, Nicholas, but I felt like, I felt like it was shedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know it's vain and shallow of me, but I can't stand the thought of losing my hair. I mean, it hasn't started yet. Okay. You look beautiful. <laughs> For how much longer, Nicholas? I mean, I'm only going to get weaker and sicker until I can't hide it anymore. <laughs> You'll get through it. You don't know that? No one does. Hey. Is there something else? Yeah. Um. Today's the anniversary of... of my mother's death. She would always, always think of me first. No matter how sick she got, or how much pain she was in, you know. 
And I just remember thinking that, oh, I mean, I could, I could never, ever be as, as brave or as strong as she was. And you are. used to tell me that I was just like my mother, you know, like my laugh and, and my expressions and the way I walked. And now I'm wondering, you know, what if it's true? What if I'm like my mother until the day I die? No, you're going to get through this. Okay. Uh, the chemo will be hard and, and you'll probably feel like hell. But you'll survive. And, and, and you'll get better. To a ripe old age. <laughs> because you say so. That's right. I'm a prince, and I'm spoiled rotten, <laughs> and I pretty much get whatever I want whenever I want it. <laughs> hey. I want to know you when I'm 73. I believe you. Oh yeah, exhausted. <laughs> Let's go get you settled upstairs. There we go. Anything else you need? I want you to follow Emily Quartermain. Report back to me on her activities, especially when she's with my nephew. That's right. Nice place. Little gloomy, though, so make sure my room gets the morning light. Lydia. So, where's Nicholas? The man I'm going to marry. 